How are you doing for those waiting for the live show? I'm starting now, <laughs> starting a bit early because I want to get Teresa before she goes and I can see her in the live chat. Hmm. Let's see. Sandy didn't go to Greece. She went to Egypt for some reason, probably because you're there and you visited. You saw lots of purple. Okay. Seneca, no dreams. Waking up, seeing Dream Maker, taking Adelphi. Okay. I don't know. The dress I wore was very swirly and purple. Very swirly. Metatron didn't go to Greece. Oh, it's not easy. I know. Teresa, three dreams. Saw a gray flag on the road and dust small fires built along one side of the road so people could not find their way. You could hear the word numb. You had a white coffee mug on a couch inside. You were painting the couch blue instead of the cup. You were in a steampunk dress sitting on a low stone wall as the moon ran over some hills. All of mist and then grew. Okay. The small area of fires had died. There was no sound of the door open. Amy's dropped out through the door. The door then was gone again. The fires left back to life. Hmm. You're not sh Oh, you can't stay, but then what did you say here? You heard the word numb. No, that's not what I said. Hmm. Kate didn't go to Greece. She dreamt she was in an Asian country. She thinks it was Thailand. Christina, it was a nice, sunny, hot day there. I remember seeing the path of stones. Yes. I saw people just all standing around. The color purple was so strong as well. You can't say you saw me, but you can't say you didn't. Exactly. I was seeing people kind of, I was seeing the essence of people, but not maybe like specifically their faces. Was I going around in circles with your dress? Yeah, kind of. I. So I kept trying to get to the rock of Sybil. So welcome, everyone. This is the dream <laughs> meetup recap show where we went to uh, here. Greece, Delphi, specifically Sybil Rock on the Sacred Way up to the Apollo, the Temple of Apollo. So I, in my dream, I kept trying to get to see everything. I was trying to go around the whole Sacred Way up to the amphitheater and all that, but I kept getting pulled back to the rock, right? I kept pulling, pulled back. So I wasn't, because I wanted to experience the whole area, and I wasn't able to each time I was just pulled right back to the rock. So you could say maybe I was swirling around. Hi, Christina. Hi, JR. <laughs> it is amazing. The essence of people, the path, some foliage. Yeah. So it was exciting. I started sort of on that sacred way path that I showed you in the first video. Hi, Karen. And, uh, so I'll just start with my dream, if you guys want. <laughs> so I started walking or floating, I guess. I don't know what, on the sacred way. And then uh, I could see, I, I could see essences of people. They were in robes, and but I couldn't really see their face. And I felt like the, the sacred way almost felt like a marble floor, like marble stone walking on. I remember it felt very gentle on my feet. You know, my, my body felt comfortable stepping on the path. And then, as I said, I tried to get to, I was trying to go up there to the Apollo, uh, Temple of Apollo. I was trying to go over to the amphitheater. And I each time I was pulled back to the rock area. So that's right here. This is the, uh, the Temple of, or sorry, the Rock of Sybil. So here are my notes. Let me read my chicken scratch in here. So... Oh, uh, thank you, Christina. Yeah, I felt I felt really comfortable there. I also felt that I knew people were looking at me. And I would assume that I knew that they were, you know, from this group. Um, I knew people knew that they were looking at me and they understood, if that makes sense. 
So I, I was standing on the rock here um, or this area, wh whatever the space is, this civil rock. And I felt the wind blowing and the wind was really warm and it blew upwards up like like if I was standing, let's say, on the rock, it was blowing upwards into my face and blowing my hair back, right? It was this, I, like I was in some kind of vortex or portal. And then I realized I could feel energy swirling um, like a portal, I would suppose. Uh, it was very warm and it felt like it was going in a circular motion around this sort of rock area, right, where I was standing. I felt safe, felt good. And then, let me read my notes here. Then I had then I started to tell people what I was seeing. So at first I, I was trying to think, am I getting a message? Like, is there a message for me or something? But I was getting a message to relay. Oh, and the time that I was there was it was not in modern times. It didn't look like this. It looked like when it would have been in its sort of heyday in Greece. So when everything would have been, you know, all elaborate and beautiful. And then I, so then I was getting a message and I could see it like in my mind's eye or in this vortex I was in that there were waters coming. There was huge waters coming. There was a uh, flood coming. It was going to destroy and topple many things, including this area in Greece. And I was warning everybody, I was saying it and people were just looking at me and I could see like on the beach, it was starting to shake. Uh, it was kind of turning red in a way, but then I realized, cause it was moving, the beach was moving. I'm like, what's going on? And it was little red crabs. <laughs> And they were all running and scurrying because I think they knew what was coming. Then I saw them hiding under rocks. Uh, so that was really trippy to see the, the beach moving, but it was red, but it was crabs. Um, and it wasn't happening. I don't believe it was going to happen in that moment when we were there, but it was coming for that area. So that's the message I got, which was not anything I was expecting at all. And I was really disappointed that I couldn't go around and see the whole place. It kept pulling me back to the rock, but I guess that was because I was supposed to give the warning that the, that the great flood or whatever was coming. So this morning, I know, right, Christine? Christina, so this morning I was talking to Pendulum, talking to the creator, just sort of ver verifying, you know, what, what I was getting. And that that was, yes, I was standing there warning them in the dream, I don't know if I was really there in real life, in the past, as a, another person, <laughs> but I was warning of this flood coming, and that it was going to topple everything over, and we know that when we see lots of ancient sites, things are all kind of toppled over, and gigantic rocks and things are, are pushed, and the force of a giant flood would do that, I would think, so I, I think I was warning them of what was to come, and then I drew sort of this little <laughs> circle here. Um, that's what it felt like. I was like, I was in the center and this little, this not little, but this vortex was going around me. If I was standing sort of here at this rock, it would have been going around. You couldn't see it, but I could feel it. So I asked the creator if I was right. And I got right that that space was some type of energy portal where I guess information could come through, or if you were connected and you stepped into it, you would get the messages. And then I asked, is it active today? And I got a no. So that portal's not active today, which is kind of a bummer because I was like going to get on the next plane and go there. <laughs> it's still a place I'd want to see. But that's what I got. So totally not what I expected at all. But what I'm grateful for is that I'm grateful for the whole dream. I'm grateful that I got to feel that sacred way path. It felt so good on my feet. It felt like marble, but soft and just luxurious or whatever, walking along it. I'm grateful I was able to warn these people of what was coming, at least in the dream, and that I could see people there. I couldn't see your faces, but I could 
and it was very quiet. Did anyone else get that it was quiet? I got that it was very quiet, at least as I was walking by and people were just looking at me like, I mean, maybe I was envision maybe I was envisioning myself as that Oracle. I have no idea and that they would like stare at her like that. Or maybe it was you guys in the dream looking at me. Um, that was amazing. And I don't know, I'm just really glad it, it worked in the sense that I got there. So just like many of you, you, you feel you were um, frustrated if you didn't get there. I woke up in the middle of the night and I didn't get there yet. And I was like, oh, no. But then anyways, I fell back to sleep and I got there. Giselle says, you envision a man wearing a crown before you fell asleep. Ooh. Tracy, wonder if I was the light being that opened the door in my dream and that people were listening to you. Yes, no sound when the light being came. That was what was something really interesting to me is that there was no sound, which I don't know, not that there has to be, but it seemed in that I could feel it, it was like kind of not slow motion, but like face. I don't know how to explain it when people would turn and look at me and I knew they saw me like I knew it. <laughs> you found a copper silver Luxor plate. Nice. Christina didn't hear anything. Why did the creator pick this place? That's a really good question. Hello, creator. Why did you pick Civil Rock for us to go to? Right. What messages did you get? The creator wants to know what did you hear? Was it the message I got? Yes. Was it messages others got? Yes. Are we to put the messages together? So what, you heard the word numb. Does numb have anything to do with it? Yes. The word numb. Was that the people on site? Was that what's to come? Fear, frozen in fear. Teresa, do you think it was like frozen in fear, like numb, like about what they're hearing? <gasps> Numb to the message, numb to my message, numb to my message of the waters coming. Teresa said, usually there are crickets and sounds at night, but the sound stopped when the door opened. Could, okay. Oh, you guys can't see that with the picture up behind me. Um, was I channeling the oracle at the time? No. Was I channeling an ancient shaman? Was I channeling a message that they needed to hear? Yes. Did they hear it in the past? No. They weren't warned of the great, of a flood. I mean, there could be many floods that happened in history. They were not aware of the message. So I went back, I guess, to tell them. Ooh. So I asked, didn't I wasn't doing a shaman. If the people were numb, they weren't. Were they shocked by what I was saying? No. Did they hear me? Yes. Were they surprised? Yes. Did I go back in time? Did I go to another dimension? Did my message help in any way? It will. In our, in my human future? No. In the past? Yes. Whoa. They had never seen it before, so they may have been numb to the message. Was I once an oracle? Was I ever an oracle in a past life? Yes. Was I ever an oracle in Greece? No. Was I ever an oracle on earth? Yes. Many places? No. 
Italy, Greece, is it in the Mediterranean? Yes. Egypt, in Africa, somewhere, somewhere in Africa, I was an oracle. Was I an oracle anywhere else? No, apparently I was an oracle in Africa. Um, so that's interesting. Now let me, oh, was it called Greece at the time? When the flood, when I warned them of the flood, was that area called Greece? No. Was it part of Africa? No. Okay. Was it, did I go there when the Apollo temple was there? Yes. As in my dream, as the African oracle? No. Okay. So in my dream, I went when this was here, but maybe it was not called Greece at the time. I don't know. But I just had a thought. Um, Linda G says she was an oracle in Greece. That is awesome, and I have no doubt. Um, oh, was it called? Was this area, the Apollo Temple, was it part of Atlantis? Was it Atlantis when I was warning them? No, Olympus. Oh, that's interesting. When I gave them a warning, was it a place called Olympus? Yes. Was it called Greece? No. Interesting. How did you think of that, Hypnicity? Wow. Will there be a future flood? Is there... Is there going to be a future flood on earth that I'm going to warn people about in my lifetime? No. It's about warning them about the flood in the past. Were they afraid of hearing the message of destruction? Yes. So they were afraid to hear it. That's why they went numb, right? It probably scared them. Was it Mesopotamia? Was it called Mesopotamia? No. It was in the vicinity of Mesopotamia, but this area where the rock is, was it called Olympus at the time? Was it Mount Olympus? Holy crap, I'm getting yes on Mount Olympus. Is that why they built the Temple of Apollo there? Yes. But I think we have another area in my timeline on Earth that's called Mount Olympus. Yes. Is that the same one? No. Ooh. I love Greek mythology. I need to study it more. I always remember being fascinated by it as a kid and in high school. Um, I certainly don't know enough about it, but I love that stuff. So, okay. So think about this. If I, if some, now I know this is pretty wild, but it's kind of interesting. What if in that dream, I went back and warned them and somehow in another dimension or another lifetime, it, you know, a repeat of it, they hear it that time. Maybe they get to be prepared for it that time if they didn't understand it this time. Because obviously something toppled all the stuff across the world. Mount Olympus is in Greece. Yeah. We don't have to repeat their mistakes of the past. Are we being, are we being warned to change? It, did my message of a great flood coming, was that for us in modern day today? Yes. Was that to warn us of a great flood coming in my human lifetime? No. Was it to warn us of one that's coming later? Yes. So let's say in 200 years or something like that. So there could, yeah. So there could be another great flood coming. That is a yes, hypnicity. Has it got anything to do with global warming? No. Climate change? No. Is this a, a cycle of the earth? 
that happens every so whatever many years. That is a yes. So this warning is warning of a cycle that happens. Yes. Okay. Is there an oracle of Mount Olympus? No. I hope so, Sterling. I mean, this stuff is so exciting. We know we are in non-linear and more of a spiral. There's no reason we can't change the timeline by changing the past. Yes. So if that message somehow gets back in time or next time it helps or something, there's something for this message and about being prepared for it. So let's say there's some huge flood in the earth cycle, right? Everything has a cycle. Maybe an earth, again, every hair on my body is standing on edge. I have goosebumps head to toe and I'm very, I'm getting a high energy here. If earth has a cycle, just like everything else has a cycle. And one of these cycles are great floods and we can know in advance. Um, we could prepare those who, who in the next 200 years may face one, right? If it's not in our lifetime, at least we could prepare those, um, in the coming years. Wow. The result. No, it didn't say climate change. It's more of a cycle that happens in on earth. Nostradamus. Yeah. Every generation has it. Are we listening? Ooh. Are humans ready to listen about the cycle of the earth and things such as great floods? Yes, we are at a time, look at that, that's swinging, yeah. We are at a time when humans are ready to listen. Okay, this next great flood, what year are we in, 2023? Is this flood, great flood going to happen before the year 3000? Is it going to happen after the year 3000? So that's a long time away. So there's not going to be a great flood before the year 3000. Is there going to be a great flood? No. But there will be one to come after that. Yeah. Ooh. That would give so much time to prepare. Can we change the timeline so Trump isn't president? <laughs> oh, the word. Yes. So I said a word into the dream. I'm getting really dizzy, guys, from all of this. This is like. Some, we've just opened up something. Of, we've opened up a portal of information and sharing and the future and the past and everything. Wow. Okay. The word I said into the dream. I don't know if you heard anything, anybody, but I know Teresa in the past has heard me say the word and it's just freaked me out because like, how does someone actually hear what I said <laughs> before I say it, before I tell you guys on the recap show, she got it. So the word that I said into the dream was harmony, harmony. That is the word I said. So maybe you heard parts of it or none of it. Like everybody, maybe you didn't hear anything. It's a long word with syllables. Uh, I said the word harmony. Um, and who knows? In a way, maybe that's, oh, I'm getting goosebumps again. Um, harmony. If I could stand there and tell them of what's to come, and help them, and in turn help our own future, there's some type of harmony happening there. I don't know. Some type of peaceful harmony, us all working together through space and time. Whoa, I am blowing my own mind right now. If we're helping each other through space and time and dimensions and vortexes and portals, that's, that's what we're supposed to probably be doing. Cleansing the earth, yes. Is it the pole shift? Is the pole shift, does the pole shift, okay, wait. Does earth experience pole shifts? No. Interesting. So the, does the poles ever flip north to south, east to west? We're getting a big no on that. Okay. Are the great floods that happen on earth got anything to do with a pole shift? No. Ooh. Flood awareness. Yeah. 
Was anyone wearing shorts with socks and sneakers? <laughs> I saw everyone in sort of what we would we would think of um, Greece attire back in the back in the old days, sort of those long robes. Um, that's what I saw. I know that I was there when um, this area was in its modern day, like in its modern day, not our modern day. It was not destroyed like it is now. There's a reader on YouTube named Civil Harmony. Whoa, there's some synchronicity. But plate tectonics could do it. Does here? Can you see there? Put it in front of my face. Um, the great floods that happen are they a result of plate tectonics moving? No. You saw everyone in togas. Nice. weird because you thought of her when I announced the meetup civil harmony however it's spelled interesting I haven't um you guys like watching her oh, that's great I haven't heard of her as you guys know I don't I don't have a lot of time for doing things that I want to do like watch the internet for psychics <laughs> so thank you for pointing that out I'll check out her channel yeah, the poles, well, they may shift, but I don't know if that's got anything to do with the floods. Do Earth's poles shift? Does the planet we're on pole shift? Does mag the magnetic pole shift? Yes. Okay. Do, do north and south poles shift or move? No. No. Does the magnetic pole move? Yes. Okay. See, now we got to figure out what we're asking here. So the magnetic pole moves, but not the actual north and south pole. Correct? That is correct. Ooh. I remember dreams. I tried the location. Suzanne, did you hear me say harmony? Ah, oh, you heard... Erini, which in Greek is for peace. That's beautiful. Will the state of Florida in the United States of America be mostly underwater by the year 2050? So it's moving in a circle. So it, will it be surrounded by water more than it is today? Yes. Will it become a small island? Yes. So... I would say that that's definitely leaning towards a lot of water. North will always be the north. Okay, what should we focus on with the information from this message? Is it preparing for a great flood? No. Is it figuring out how the earth works? Yes. Figure out how the earth works. Figure out the earth's cycle. That's a big yes I'm getting. Do you want us to figure out earth's cycle? Yes. If we figure out earth's cycle, will we be able to prepare for what comes? Yes. We're not listening to earth. We're not paying attention to the earth. Look at it swinging now. We are not paying close enough attention to the cycle of the earth. Look at this, it's gonna hit me in the face. We're too busy focusing on consumerism and crap and having to pay taxes and all that kind of stuff. We need to focus and learn about the earth. We're not listening, we're not paying attention. Now, obviously, some of us are trying to, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, Mystic Soul, well, maybe next time. <laughs> love is love, Mother Earth. Yeah. Hypnicity. We need to study Earth's cycles. We need to look at the history of time that we know, or at least we've been told about, or look at archaeological sites and see what's going on and try to figure out 
the puzzle, the cycle, the rhythm of earth, right? You want us to figure out the puzzle of earth, the cycle of earth. That's the key. That's the key to saving ourselves. That's the key to saving humanity is, okay. Can we use astrology to help figure out earth cycles? Yes, we can use that as a tool. Are there other tools we can use? Yes. Is it looking at historic sites? Yes. Are there, so there's many tools we can use to study Earth and to figure it out. Well, you know, I'm going to be all over this. Yes, let's do another one soon. I will, I will put this down in my to-do list. <laughs> Saving the Earth saves us. Couldn't said it better. Yep. Saving the Earth does that save us? Yes. Learning the earth, learning the structure, learning the cycles. Look at this. Of the earth will then save us. Here's a question. Has humans, humanity, humans, ever been wiped out or almost wiped out before from flooding or other earthly catastrophes? Yes. If we had learned the cycle of earth, could we have saved all of those people? Yes. That's a big yes. This is awesome. My mind's just spinning. <laughs> we need to learn First Nation knowledge. Yes. How to live within the means of earth and what we're borrowing from the planet. Those born seven. Yes. 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 You know what else we need to pay attention to is the animals. How do the animals live in harmony with earth? And what signs do they show us? Now, remember, in my dream last night, I saw the beach and the beach was red and it was moving. And then I looked, I could look closer and see it was red crabs all running and scurrying because they knew the floodwaters were coming and they were hiding under in the rocks. So we've got to pay attention to the animals as well in marine life and plant life, etc., because they will also show us what's going on. My head is spinning. Oh, Sterling, your daughter's in labor. Congrats. She's due Wednesday. Ah. Oh. Are there any currently any scientists studying the cycles of Earth in order in a nice that good scientist? Let me just put it that way. Are there any good scientists trying to study the cycles of Earth? Okay, yes, that's good. Something like Noah's Ark. Yes, the tale of Noah's Ark. Did Noah have advanced warning of a flood coming? That is a yes. How did Noah get the information? Watching? No, big universe. Tapped into the universe? It's going in a big circle. Noah, big circle. Look at that. Noah knew the earth? The movement? There we go. Noah understood the movement of the earth. And what was going to come. Wow, look at this thing rocking. <laughs> Do you see it spinning in a circle too? Was Noah psychic? No. Was Noah an oracle? No. Noah was something though. Was Noah just a regular human? No. Was Noah tapped into... You, uh, the greater, like, I don't know, archangels tapped into the universe. There we go. Noah was tapped into the universe. One way or the other was connected to the universe and figured it out. There are many earth warriors here at this time. Yes. So there's so much like we're, we're not paying attention. 
as a collective humans. Um, but some of us are. And if we can prevent this, I think there's something else in this though. Because we're just talking about a big flood, but think about this. If we humans study and understand the earth and its cycles, can we be prepared or help prevent certain uh, destructive events that may occur? Yes. Are these events only water-based? No. So there could be, what, like solar flare? No. Around us, the universe? Watch the skies as well. Watch the skies as well, for it has information too to help us understand the universe and the where we live. I just was going to say the dimension we live in, um, but you see? So there's signs all around. We're just not paying attention or we're not piecing it all together or there's only a couple people trying. Ooh. I'm getting dizzy. Lightworkers are rising. Yes. We can set the intention for needed changes. Yes. We can stand together to rise above. I love that. So, yeah, it could be anything. It could be fires. It could be floods. It could be... Um, Earthquakes, it could be something from the sky. We, there's a, oh, what's this, this? The earth we live on, that I live on right now in this timeline, does it always go through the same cycles? Yes. Do the cycles ever change? Is there anything new ever added? or taken away, no. So for example, if floods happen every 200,000 years, they always happen every 2,000, 200,000 years. So there could be earthquakes, solar flares, um, flooding, all of these things are on a schedule is what you're saying. They're on a cycle. We need to figure out the cycle. It's right there in front of our face. It's right there in front of, we can see it if we just look. That's what I'm hearing. Whew. So it's all in a cycle. We just need to chart, or chart, chart it, find it, look for it, study it. Um, you got that right. <laughs> wow, we wow. An earth movement coming. Yeah, okay. Is there going to be a earth or whatever you want to call it, the universe that we currently live in, that I currently live in on this timeline, is there going to be a another um, big earth cycle coming before the year 2030? Yes. Does it have to do with water? No. Does it have to do with earthquakes? No. Does it have to do with volcanoes? It has to do with volcanoes. So volcano eruptions in a cycle pattern that has happened in the past. Wow. Is there any other earth event that's going to happen before the year 2030? Yes. Let's put my arm down. So you said volcanoes. That's a yes. Is it fires? No. Is it something from the sky? No. Is it like a drought? A pole shift, magnetic pole shift. Is it something below the surface of the earth? Yes. Lava? Volcano? No. What would be below the earth's surface? Magnetic poles? No. A layer of crust? Okay, so tectonic shifting? That's a yes. So plate shifting? Before the year 2030. Will it be devastational? 
I just asked if it's going to end life with this dev devastational, um, what do I call it, tectonic shift. It's not going to do that. Is it going to change the weather patterns by 2030? Yes. It's going to change a few things. It's going to, this tectonic shift is going to shift and change. So which, is it um, a tectonic shift below the Earth's surface? No above like above water level yes and be above water level is it going to be uh north america that's shifting no south america that's shifting no is it going to be europe no africa no australia yes new zealand yes antarctica yes so the lower portion, or well, what we're told, there's going to be a shift. Are those, is Australia going to move, like literally move? No. Is it going to go underwater? No. Is it going to raise higher? No. I don't know. A deep freeze? No. Is, is where Australia is on the map right now, where I think it is, is that going to move? Is it going to get larger? Australia is going to get larger. Is New Zealand going to get larger? Yes. So that would be a receding of water. Yes. A receding of water in Australia, New Zealand, and Antarctica to expose more earth underneath. Is there a tectonic shift happening that's going to do that? Create that? Yes. So again, I don't understand everything, obviously. Um, so water's going to recede and those continents are going to get bigger by 2030. Wow. Okay. Back to the future. <laughs> Aliens. No, it's um, the Earth cycle. Some of us got there in the dream state. Not everyone, and that's okay. That's okay. Oh, you guys want me to ask what volcanoes are going to erupt? Um, volcano eruption before 2030, before the year 2030 on this earth in this timeline. Are the volcanoes in North America going to erupt? Are any of them? No. Are any of the volcanoes in South America going to erupt? Yes. Are any volcanoes in Europe going to erupt? Yes. Are any of the volcanoes in Egypt going to erupt? Yes. Are any volcanoes in Australia going to erupt? Yes. New Zealand, yes. Antarctica, yes. Is the, are these volcanoes on the surface? Are some of them on the surface? Yes. Are some of them under the ground or under the water? Yes. Okay. So there's going to be a, a cycle of them erupting. Some are on the surface, some are under the water. Mm. You ready to travel light and listen to your higher self? Yeah. And don't live in fear. It will numb you. Yeah. Very good, Teresa. Are there going to be any changing ocean currents by the year 2030? No. Is the area of Antarctica, Australia, and New Zealand going to split? Any of them going to split? No. Just more exposure. It's almost going to be like connecting them. With the water, water receding, they each get bigger and then maybe almost connect. Yeah. 
Australia and New Zealand, there is a submerged continent there. We discovered it long, not long ago. China and Russia. Sorry, I was including them as Europe. I'm just visualing things in my head. Sorry, I didn't mean to, to not, but that's what I was thinking. Are there going to be any volcanoes in the area of China and Russia that erupt before the year 2030? No. Seems like it's lower. Um, what was I getting? Africa, South, Af South America, Australia. So the lower what we consider the lower part of the earth, the uh, southern parts of the earth. This was a non-physical traveling, like a gentle wind down to the stone path. I know I felt that stone path, the sacred way was very gentle to step on. I really liked that part. There was just an earthquake in Bali. Fuego is nonstop erupting now. Yikes. Will earthquakes, sorry, will volcanoes be erupting in Japan by 2030? What about Italy? No, I got no with those. Did you get the word harmony? I said harmony into the dream. Some of the ocean water going to drain into. Okay. So with the area of Australia and New Zealand and Antarctica getting exposed more, where is that extra water, that excess water going? Is it going to uh, go under the Earth's crust? Yes. Will any of that water be pushed onto land uh, that currently exists? So like pushing all the way over to wherever. No, it's not going to change the water level. So the water's going to go underground, under the crust. Why are you moving backwards? What does that mean? Underneath? It's going to go underneath. It's going to go underneath pockets. So I'm hearing pockets of water. It will go underneath. Wow. Well, this thing was, no wonder the creator picked this uh, spot for us to go because what a message we're getting that, so if you just tuning in now, you can rewind and watch, but I'll just sort of recap. I was given a message when I was standing on the rock in Greece in historic times. And I said, uh, there's a great, there's great waves and water coming, like there will be a flood. And that's exactly what I think happened in that area. They were caught off guard and a huge water event happened and toppled everything over. And maybe through some kind of portal, they'll hear me in the past because of the future. <laughs> right. And also we are learning the lesson. The lesson was this is so incredible how this happens, guys. Like, I had no idea this was going to happen in this show. We are to learn the Earth cycle. We'll learn it by studying uh, historic sites. We'll learn it by studying the stars. We'll, we have to learn Earth's events so that we can prevent or prepare for what comes because Earth has a constant cycle, right? Might be things that happen in 200,000 years or might be things that happen every 1,000 years. We need to be paying attention um, and figure it out and save ourselves in the meantime. This was wonderful. Thank you, Christina. I'm just blown away. I am just amazed. Like I, you know, I know, you know, you just think you're going to have a dream meetup and, but every single one of these dream meetups, something amazing has happened or something unexpected. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I definitely am going to book another one soon because this was awesome. So thank you for joining me. And if you don't remember anything, that doesn't mean you weren't there. It just means you don't remember. And it doesn't mean to give up because it takes time. 
and it just in the best, the best thing I would say to you is don't put any pressure on yourself when you're going to go to bed. Just say, okay, I'm setting my intention, da, 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 and then go to sleep. Don't try to force it. Cause I know when I forced it and I did for try to force it last night. And that's why when I woke up in the middle of the night, nothing had happened. And then I just gave up and went back to bed. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. And then that's when it all happened. <laughs> so you just have to be in the right mind frame. Um, uh, and this is great. Thank you so much for the experience, everybody. And I look forward to the next one and the message we got. We all understand. And I'll just re, re say the word I said into the dream harmony. Let's all live in harmony together. All right, everybody. Thank you. That was just amazing. I'm still reeling. Okay. <laughs> Bye. And thank